Okay. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful evening as we are gathered here to learn about how the high priests are being prepared before they take part in sacrificing or offerings the offerers are bringing Father. Help us to understand the concept behind it so that we can also be a, a royal high priest in your presence, Father. Open our eyes, open our minds to understand everything, to receive everything. Let our hearts be burning like the MIS disciples of God. Conceal me behind your cross and the blood so that people will see only, hear only the voice of God. Bless those who are coming on the way, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Nice meeting you all once again. We have come, we have finished about 10 parts. We have come to the 11th part today. And uh, I have given the title as the preparation of priest, preparation of Aaron and his sons. Now we have been looking at the offering so far. Mainly there are about five offerings. We learned about it. Bond offering, meal offering, peace offering, sin offering, trespass offering. So the burnt offering, we learned everything in detail and also the regulations to offer, how to do the offerings, what are the procedures. It was given in 6th and 7th chapter of Leviticus, instruction to the priests, how do they execute the office of the priest, how do they sacrifice, all the procedures are given there. But today's topic is about the high priest. Before they do the job, that is only the instruction, they didn't do anything. God gave them instruction how to do it. Now the preparation of the high priest or the priest and the son, Aaron and his sons are being given here. How they are made ready to do the job, their ordination, their consecration, or you can say, how they are separated, how they are selected, all these details we are going to see. Let me share the screen with you. So the preparation of priests, or you can say the preparation of Aaron and his sons. And 11th part, the chapter 8 is very important. So we have seen all this sweet aroma, non-sweet aroma, and then uh, descriptions of rit rituals, dist um, distribution of sacrificial portions, all this we saw. Regarding the five offerings, if you take burnt offering, it's like you are surrendering yourself on the altar of God. See, you are the burnt in the burnt offering, the one is offering himself on the altar. He's saying that I am nothing, Lord, I offer myself, I offer my body, spirit, and soul. Accept me. Once we are accepted in the presence of God. Then you can have the fellowship offering. You are sharing meal with God. That's what the fellowship offering is all about. See, it's a beautiful thing that God accepted you and you are sharing a meal with Him. You can sup with Him. Third thing is a peace offering, it's a happy offering, happy occasion, because you are accepted by the Creator. Then sin and trespass offering or you are setting right your violations of the law, restituting or the restitution. You are paying back everything what you have done. That's what is restitution all about. David prayed, you do not delight in sacrifice. We give sacrifice. Some people are uh, depending on the sacrifice alone. They believe that I have given so much offer tree or I, I have given my body. Or I have pierced, I have uh, pierced my ear, or I have 
to cut the hair or run away for the Lord's sake. That is not the sacrifice. That is a sign of sacrifice. That's it. The real sacrifice, you see here, do not delight to sacrifice or I would bring it. This is what David prayed. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. But the real sacrifice is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. How do we present ourselves in front of God? That's what the, the real sacrifice is all about. What is a real restitution? If you see the Old Testament, whoever steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, must pay back five head of cattle for the ox and four sheep for the sheep. That's what the restitution is all about. To return back, you need to pay more, like fine. In the New Testament, you find Zacchaeus. He was collecting more than what he is supposed to collect. Tax. Zacchaeus stood up when he met the Lord. That's what happened now. This is another restitution, you see. He said to the Lord, look Lord, here now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times. If he has cheated 400 rupees, he says, I will give back 400 rupees. What is this? This is the real sign of restitution. Paying back. Feeling sorry. I mentioned the last time everything remorse. So, the, all the offerings are all about your heart. Without your heart involved in offering, even in today's life, you cannot enjoy salvation. When this man felt sorry for everything, he had the remorse, he felt sorry, he paid back. You know what did Jesus say now? Jesus said to him, today salvation come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. See, immediately salvation came. So the offerings in our life, when you offer, God looks at the heart, not not like men are looking at you. What extent you are broken? What extent you are submitting yourself? Even in while praising and worshipping, some people just praise and worship without getting involved in their whole heart. You need to do everything wholeheartedly. Is this the heart? Eyes will be looking at somewhere else, the thought will be something else, but we will be singing as we are singing, Hallelujah, like that. God is unhappy with it. Now today's part, it's a, as usual, this is very much essential to know about these utensils. This is another view of the tabernacle. My Zonder one study Bible, I got this picture. You see, this is a cross section of the tabernacle. You have the burnt offering, the altar, then basin, labor, they call it. Then you have Altar of incense in the middle, the showbread, lampstand, and this is the Ark of the Covenant. So let, when you go to the 8th chapter, see that there are three divisions. See, this is the 8th chapter of Leviticus. There are three divisions. 8th chapter, 1 to 5, preparation for anointing. See, bring Aaron and his sons, their garments, anointing oil. The bull, the rams, these are main items you can find in the 8th chapter. Aaron and his sons, their garments, we are going to learn about it. Anointing oil, if time permits. And then offering, you know, ordination offerings, I can call it. Bull, two rams, there are three items found here. Then the consecration ceremony starts. Then finally, the consecration offering, these three items, how they are offering the bull and the two rams. The first time in the desert, the congregation is gathering now. First time they are getting ready for the service in the wilderness. 
the first time the high priest being prepared here see ordination of the high priest that's what without a high priest is prepared ordinated one cannot function in the office of a priest so how they do the how do they do the priest ordination that's what we see here the lord said to moses bring aaron and his sons the garments the anointing oil the bull for the sin offering two rams and basket containing bread made without yeast gather the entire assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting as usual see the entire assembly cannot see through the small door and some uh, commentators say that probably the tribes the elder, the tribal leaders will gather to witness everything and then moses did as the lord commanded him and the assembly gathered at the entrance moses told the assembly this is what the lord has commanded to be done see here this is the five preparation then you have the consecration of the priest Aaron and his sons cleansing clothing and consecration these three points we will see in elaborate cleansing the priests are cleansed first without cleansing they cannot wear the holy garments then the clothing clothing there are many items and then finally they are being separated or consecrated or they are made holy so the sixth verse it says that then moses brought aaron and his sons forward and washed them with water see this washing is very important without cleansing you see you have spiritual cleansing as well as the body cleansing but this is body the cleansing the physically they need to be clean you know that there is a very uh, distinct clarity between cleanliness and uncleanliness guilt offering they are paying offering for the if they are unclean if the bed is wet if somebody urinated or or uh, or any uncleanness found in the house you need to cleanse yourself make the uh, restitution offering or cleansing offering go back to the lord then he put tunic sash i am not going to read every verse robe ephod waistband breast piece uh, breast piece urim and thummim in breast piece all these details we will see in detail later then the turban on aaron's head and gold plate where it is written holy to the lord then after cleansing he takes the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it and also he consecrated the priest as well he sprinkled some of the oil on the altar seven times you see the entire uh, uh, tabernacle is being consecrated made holy see the main i have been telling you earlier also holiness holiness everywhere cleanliness is very important because god dwells in a place where the holiness is there otherwise the glory of god cannot descend into the tabernacle so he anointed the altar all utensils basins everything was even the things were consecrated and then some of the oil was poured on aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate and he was consecrated as well then he brought aaron's sons forward and put tunics on them tied sashes around them and fastened them for fasten caps on them as the lord commanded you see the priesthood why the priest is prepared so much we may think was there not any other priest before these procedures started no even before the concept of priesthood was there right from the beginning see the concept of priesthood it's what it was not new it did not start from the book of leviticus it started in the book of genesis 
It, the concept of priesthood did not originate with the nation of Israel. In the patriarchal period, the head of each household functioned as mediating priest on behalf of his family. See, even before Abraham, Job was living. And he functioned as a priest. You see, the high priest, the priestlyhood started much earlier. Before it was given, the initiation was given to Moses. Because the priesthood was very much essential. If you take Job, you see, when a period of fasting, feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to, to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering. You see, he is functioning, <coughs> he is functioning as a priest. You see here? He would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. See, this, this kind of the Old Testament time, they, they were having altars like this, stone altar. They cannot walk on it. The private parts cannot be seen, exposed to the Lord. So this kind of sacrifice, every, the patriarchs, you know, the fathers, Abraham, Isa, Isaac, Jacob, you take Abraham, Abraham sacrificed. He functioned as a high priest wherever he went. That's what is, you read here. Genesis 12, 78, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. Then immediately, what did he do? He built an altar there to the Lord who appeared to him. What is building? When he, he built an altar means he, he did a sacrifice. He gave a sacrifice. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the east and I, yeah, I. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. You see? Altar means it's not building an altar. He gave sacrifice as well. Sacrifice is thanksgiving. God acknowledged how God was happy with it. See, Abraham went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron. There he built an altar. Wherever he went. So, when he built an altar, that means you are sacrificing to the Lord. What to do with our Christian life? We need to do wherever we go. We need to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Many people do not know what is praise and worship. I have explained many times. We need to build the altar and do sacrifice. Worship the Lord. That's the reason why we go to church. Worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. The altar is our heart. We need to surrender our heart. You know, we, we need to self-declare ourselves. What all you violated, what all you spoke against the Lord. Your activities which made unhappy the, our Lord. You need to confess and set right to the Lord. See, because the Bible says that our spirit and soul and body be blameless when He comes. Why? That's the reason why God gave you these procedures. Abraham, even right long before, wherever he pitched his tent, he built an altar. See, Isaac, he did the same thing. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. Then he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well and he was blessed. So the blessing comes whenever you built an altar and called a call on the name of the Lord. Every blessing is attached with it. It's not God will ignore you. God is happy about it. It becomes a sweet aroma in the nostrils of God. He should reach Him. Your praising and worshipping should be pleasant to Him. You are making God happy by surrendering yourself on the altar of God. That's what we read in the 12th chapter of Romans. 12th Romans, you know, you, uh, I'll show you the 
12th, I, I think I showed you before, but however I show you again, 12, Roman 12th. Mm. See, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true, proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. Be transformed by renewing your mind. You see, this is what the real, the true and proper worship is. That offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. If your body is not offered as a living sacrifice, certainly it will not fulfill the law of the Lord. The body will violate. That is a place where the disobedience comes. Those who do not offer their bodies, they will not have control over their eyes. They will not have, have control over their mind. They will not have control over their hand. You can hit anybody at any time. You, become, you will become anger. Anger will be there. Frustration will be there. Unhappiness will be there. Why? Because the bodies, your bodies are not offered on the altar as a living sacrifice. That's God. That's what God expects. The forefathers, the patriarchs did the same thing. Wherever they went, went they did it. They called on the name of the Lord. See, Jacob, he did the same thing. Then he set up an altar and called it El Elohe Israel. So the, the priestlyhood started much earlier than the pre-period of, you know, the Moses. Now, let's come and see how the high priests are selected according to the law of Moses. Selection of high priest. This is also very, any, you know, unless otherwise you are called by the Lord, one cannot serve like Aaron. That's what the fifth chapter of Hebrews say. So the selection is important. Selection, cleansing, then you have uh, clothing, and then you have consecration. See, he must be from the tribe of Levi. And he should not have any physical defects. Anyone who is going to work, function as a high priest, should not have any defects. That's what, that's how they, they have a panel to select the high priest or the priest. If they are called to function as a priest, they will examine his whole body, whether he has any physical defect or not. It's given in uh, Leviticus 21. See, no man with a crippled foot or a crippled hand or who has a hunchback like this, a man with a bent back or a dwarf a short man. If he has got a spin tie, or one eye is blind, or one eye is closed, and who has festering or running sores or wound, unhealed wounds, open wounds, oozing out, and if if the man has a damaged testicles. See, they check everything. Even the testicles will be checked. Whether it is damaged or not. You see, the lamb, in the lamb of God, you know, the lamb should be without blemish. Same way, the officiating priest should not have any deformity. This is a must. So the first is from the tribe of Levi. He must be a Levite. Secondly, without any defect in him. No descendant 
of Aaron, the priest, who has any defect is come near to present the food offerings to the Lord. He cannot. Not allowed. Because he has a defect, he must not come near to offer the food of his God. This is all symbolical. It's a shadow in the Old Testament. You know, our God is a holy God, complete. He is full. So the, in physically, this defect, defective person cannot go near. See, in the Old Testament, the leper, leprosy person is kept outside of the town. And uh, he cannot come near another street. You know, they are, they are made to live separately. King Uziah was a king, but when he became leper, he stayed away. Even the burial was in a separate place, not along with the royal uh, burial ground. That's what the World Testament laws are about. So you need to see whether there is any defect or not. Then you do the cleansing and clothing, consecration. See that this before the ordination of Aaron and his sons, you need to clean them, clothe them, consecration, wash basin. This is where the wash basin comes. They're right in front of the Holy of Holies. You know, the wash basin is here. Here. See, they do the burnt offering here. Then the wash basin comes. The priests are washed here. Then Moses brought Aaron and his sons forward and washed them with water. This is the water. Cleansing water. In the New Testament, you know, I told you earlier that it can be compared here, the cross of God, where our Lord is sacrificed here. You are crucified with Him. You are resurrected with Him. Then you are cleansed with water. The water is a baptism. You need to go through it. The priest need to do the cleansing. Without cleansing, he cannot enter here. So we cannot enter into the holy place or holy of holies. The second part is the holy of holies. The most holy place. So as a Christian, you need to meet the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. This is the place. And you must go through the waters of baptism if time permits. There are some wrong teachings going on without baptism of what is a baptism? You cannot go to heaven. No, if, 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 if you have enough time to take baptism, you need to take baptism. You have very good opportunity, you have time and everything, you ignore it, yes, you, make, you are making a mistake. See, the thief on the cross did not take baptism, but he was in paradise with the Lord Jesus Christ. Same way, a person who has ample time should not ignore this waters of baptism. In many churches, are, you know, I met a lot of people and asked them, are you baptized? Yes. Why did they? But they said it's important to go to heaven. So, you know, what is the significance of baptism? We don't know. Many people do not know. But the pastors are giving baptism. And many talk proudly that I got baptized. The baptism she is that you are crucified with Christ. You are burying your dead body with Christ. You see, here in the waters of baptism, I want to show you. This is an important topic. I'll show you. Go to Romans. Uh, Romans 6 chapter. You see here. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. We are, we are crucified with Jesus Christ, died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who, are, who were baptized into Christ Jesus, 
were baptized in his death. See, in the waters of baptism, you are being crucified, you are being buried with him. The dead body is being buried with him. So we therefore buried with him through baptism into death. We need to remember many people do not go through this, go through this burial procedure. So the old nature, old character, old all kind of filth still you find in a believer who says that I am baptized. They are not buried with him. They are not dead with Jesus Christ. They are not crucified with, his, uh, with Jesus Christ. The flesh and his desires are not crucified with him. The waters of baptism is very much important. But you need to know the meaning of it and they take the baptism. See here, we are baptized into Christ Jesus. We are baptized into his death. You are dead with him. Your sins are dead with him. Your flesh and this, and this evil natures are crucified with him. Then he says, fourth verse, we were therefore buried with him through baptism to death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You need to you need to be resurrected with Jesus Christ to lead a newness of life. Another version says, You have to be crucified with Him as well as resurrected with Him. The fifth verse says that if we have been united with Him in death like this, we will certainly also be united with Him in resurrection like His. That is the what is the baptism. The, 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 the priests are being cleansed there. They are made holy. That's the place you are, you are, you are, you are prepared. You are qualified to enter into the holy place. And then the most holy place. Once you enter into the holy place, you can read the word of God. You will understand it. That's the showbread. You have the lampstand. You need the, you will get the Holy Spirit anointing. Without going through death and resurrection, you will not find any change in someone's life. You see, the eighth verse, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. Because we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin one for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. That's what you and me. We are living for the Lord. The death is gone. We are dead to sin. But we are living for God. Death cannot, we will face death of course. If the, the, the coming of Jesus is carried. But we'll, we'll be with him. The next moment we will open our eyes in heaven. If death comes earlier. That's what the what does the baptism is all about. So you need to wash. He was washed. Then cleansing over. Then clothing. High priest. Holy garment of the high priest. Even the garments are consecrated here. When the Holy Spirit is, when the priest is prepared, see here, this is the garment. He will have a turban, gold plate, onyx stones on either shoulder, two square stone, and then breastplate of judgment. We'll see everything in detail now. Sash, you know, the tying one. Ephoth, robe, pomegranate, and bells. This is the garment of the priest or high priest. Once they are washed, they have inner garments as well, made of linen. The underwear. Mainly they wear the underwear first. Underwear in order to hide the private part. After wearing the underwear, 
they have the tunic this weight is like a you know arabic dress then they tie a sash inside on top of this they are wearing all the other items this ifad the robe the blue one all this so right i'll start with the turban it is not in the eighth chapter of leviticus you find it in the book of leviticus uh, exodus see here in the exodus 39 and exodus 28 these regulation the about the priestly garments are given in detail i have brought those details here in order to make you understand if i go by only the eighth chapter you cannot understand it because only two or three verses are given to explain about the garment the holy garment see aaron and his sons they made tunics of fine linen i told you they wear the tunics the work of a weaver the turban of fine linen the turban is a long ribbon they like like uh, how they do the sardajis they tie the turban this is tied around the head like that the linen caps and the undergarments see these are all the essential thing there are undergarments the shafts was made of finely twisted linen no tying rope like inside blue purple and scarlet yarn the work of the embroider as the lord told moses commanded moses this is mainly is the turban they should have the turban without the turban the high priest cannot go inside then you have the golden plates on the head is written a holy to the lord they made the gold plate the plate is a sacred emblem out of pure gold and it was engraved on it like an inscription on a seal holy to the lord see why is written here he is made holy to the lord It should be obvious to people that he is consecrated, he is a priest, he is made with holy, he cannot enter without having the holiness. You know, when people see a born again believer, they can say very well that this man is different from others. Whether it is written here or holy unto the Lord or not, but by the way you behave and talk, it will reflect that you are a separate man. But the priests are returned that holy to the Lord. He is made holy. It's a pure golden emblem. You see, a sacred emblem. And they fastened with a blue cord at the back. You see here on the other side. The blue cord to it and attach it to the turban. So that it will not fall down. As the Lord commanded Moses. So you have the turban. The sacred emblem where it's written holiness unto the lord see this is what is like with the turban with the blue cord holy to the lord you see the ribbon they, they tied it with the turban then they forth on top of the linen garments tunic you see here this is the dress front and back and it is that it has a chain here you see here the belt like in the front it comes like this it is holding on top of the tunics it's worn they made the ephod of gold blue purple scarlet this is the four important items to weave this garment gold to blue purple scarlet and you know there is 
lot of explanation about the shadow of messiah in the new testament they they explain some people spiritualize every single word in the garments of the high priest gold indicates divinity of jesus christ blue indicates such and such i don't want to go through like that there are some spiritual meanings when it is necessary i'll go through it but the fourth is made of this four color the gold you know gold strip is real gold see here this is the cloth like this they make a fine strip of gold and they weave it with it blue purple and scarlet yarn some of the colors are taken from the snail you know the from the sea they take the snail the colors are taken there are so many methods are there see they hammered out thin sheets of gold gold uh, they make it very thin and cut strands like a rope like a thread to be worked into the blue purple and scarlet yarn see they weave like this and then they put the golden strip it is really spiritual meaning in it it indicates the divinity of god and then you have a fourth they made shoulder pieces for the fourth on both shoulder which were attached two of its corners see here on both side so it could be fastened it is skillfully woven waistband was like it of one piece with the effort made with gold blue purple scarlet yarn finely twisted linen as the lord commanded moses so they make the two pieces one in the front one in the back and then they connect it they are they have the golden ring and the hook they connect it like this this is a fourth and then there are two onyx stones they keep two stones on either shoulder here see they have the pouch in their foot in the pouch there are two onyx stones kept here on the stones they write down the names of 12 tribes six on one another six on other stone their names are written here that he carries the high priest is carrying the 12 tribes into the presence of god see they mounted the onyx stones in gold filigree what is filigree is like a small square metal gold this thing to fix the stone inside filigree settings and engraved like a seal with the names of sons of israel so the sons of names were engraved in it god gave special talent to those people to do this main work they fastened them on the shoulder piece of their father as memorial stones for the sons of israel as the lord commanded moses got it you have the onyx stones then the breast piece this is the major piece they fashioned the breast piece the work of a skilled craftsman basilel was given a special gift to do this work they made it like the ephod of gold blue purple scarlet this is the one the breast piece and you have tall filigree and filled with a stone again they mounted four rows of precious stone there were four rows in three each row had three stones that's the breast piece very important you have gold blue purple scarlet this is the, i have given the background color like that mixed with all that see here they fashioned the piece the work of skilled craftsman you know though they were in the desert how did they get all that 
because when they started from egypt god told them to collect everything they brought they brought all they brought all the materials gold uh, textiles this yarn everything they brought so they were able to make it in the desert in the wilderness so the breast, breast piece has 12 stones four rows each row three stones and why each row three stones there are 12 stones indicating the 12 tribes the first row was cornelian chrysolite and beryl you see here reuben simeon and levi see their names are engraved in hebrew on the stones the second row was turquoise lapis lazuli and emerald lapis lazuli and emerald judah ishakar and zebulon see here and the third row you have jasin agate and amethyst you have naphtali gad and asher and the final row topaz onyx and jasper manasseh ephraim and benjamin so the the high priest in the breast piece he carries the 12 tribes symbolically into the presence of god for their atonement for their sins you see only once in a year on the day of atonement the high priest is entering into the holy the most holy place in order to do the atonement for the whole congregation the whole of israelites so this man carries symbolically the 12 tribes on his chest in his in his heart why near the heart because he knows their pain he knows their weakness he knows their suffering. That's what we read. We read in the book of Hebrews, fifth chapter. You know, Hebrews 5 says, you see here, Hebrew 5, last week, I think I was, I was showing, you see here. Hebrew 5, you see. See, every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people. In matters related to God, he is representing the 12 tribes to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. You know, I told you in the beginning that these studies are important. Even the old Tamil people to come and join here. Leviticus and Hebrews. A lot of people are coming. I just want to remind you one more thing. That if you have family group, you may be in many groups. Please share my studies so that many will come and join us. I am not receiving any, any monetary benefit, but I receive the happiness when I see more people coming for the Lord. Some of them are four or five, they are introducing every individual. So try to introduce to your groups so that they will join for the Bible study. Thank you again for coming. Fifteen people have come, I am happy about it. So, you see here, he is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. So the high priest, you know, in his chest, in his heart, he can feel the pain of others. That's the reason he carries all the tall tribes. You see, then they are mounted in gold filigree again, 12 stones, each of the names of the sons of Israel, engraved like a seal with the name of one of the 12 tribes. The names are written there. Then below this breast piece, below the breast piece, Two more stones are kept inside. They are called Urim Tumim. See these two stones. They keep it under the pouch. You see the picture I have given here. Also, they put the Urim and the Tumim in the breast piece. 
So they may be over Aaron's heart whenever he enters the presence of the Lord. So Aaron will always bear the means of making decisions for the Israelites over his heart before the Lord. He wants to make a decision. When he goes before the Lord, this, these stones will help him to make decision, to get the divine resolution, to get the divine decision about, about certain things. They go to the priest and ask him what to do with this. These stones are used to decide what is the decision of the Lord. It's near Aaron's heart. Whenever he enters the presence of the Lord, he will always bear the means of making decisions for the Israelites over his heart before the Lord. See here, the Hebrew for this phrase probably means the curses traditionally lights and the perfections. Urim is curses are to me probably again we know, no one knows exactly the meaning of these two stones. There were sacred lots. The Hebrew word to Urim begins with the first letter, Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. Tumim is Tau is the last letter, Alpha and Omega. In New Testament Greek, we say Alpha and Omega. In Hebrew, Aleph and Tau are the first and last letter. So the Urim, the word Urim starts with the Aleph, with the letter. A is silent. And then ends, the Tumim starts with the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. They were sacred lords, were often used in times of crisis to determine what is the will of God. They use the stones to find out the will of God. What is the will of God? It has been suggested that, it's suggested. If Urim dominated when the lords were cast, the answer was no. They might too make two chit or they might take one stone out. If Urim comes, it is no. If Tumim comes, yes. But in any event, their every decision was from the Lord, according to Proverbs 16.33. See your numbers. He is to stand before Eliezer, the priest, who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. As his command, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out and at his command, they will come in. Whether going out, coming out, everything as per the Urim and Tumim. You understand now? Now, so we have seen the dresses of high priest. Clothing is over. You have the turban, the sacred emblem, holiness unto the Lord, the fourth, and uh, I forgot to tell you about the pomegranate and the bells. They are there while the priest is making, going inside the Holy of Holies. People outside can hear the noise of the bell, the golden bell. And there is a saying that they used to have a rope outside. If the bell sound is not heard, it is believed that the man is dead. They will pull out the dead body. So the ordination offering next is there. See ordination offerings, 14 to 25. In the ordination offering, there are three items. Sin offering, burnt offering, ordination offering. Initially it was Cleansing, clothing, the third one is consecration of the priest, ordination. For the consecration, 
for the priest again you need to have a bull mostly for the major consecration bull is important burnt offering ordination offering you still read it here 14th verse see here he then presented the bull for the sin offering I'll just roughly give an idea, then next week you will see the remaining. See here, bull for the sin offering and ram for the burnt offering. Ram. There are two rams. Bull and two rams. We saw in the beginning. First verse. So, bull for the sin offering, ram for the burnt offering, Finally, the ram for the ordination. See here, verse 22. Ram for the ordination offering. After all these three offerings are important. When this is made, then the priest is prepared. They take off blood and put it on the Aaron's right ear, right thumb, and the big toe of his right foot. Even the sons are, the blood is applied. God willing, next week we will see all that. You know, there are more details here. How he did it. All these details, next week you will see. Ordination. But every now and then I was giving you the spiritual meaning of it. You need to offer yourself as a living sacrifice to the Lord. That's what the point is say. You need to have the holy vest. We have the robe of righteousness. We have the garment of salvation. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. You cannot grieve the Holy Spirit. We are sealed. We are holy to the Lord. We have the garment of salvation. Don't forget it. Don't lose it. You have the robe of righteousness. Let us pray. If you do not have it, try to have it. Ask the Lord to give you the garment of salvation, robe of righteousness, so that you can offer yourself every day on the altar of sacrifice, your bodies. That is the true praise and worship. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to learn about the high priest, how they are instituted, how they are prepared, how they are cleansed, and about their holy vest. Father, we come to the throne that we also, we are the royal priest. You separated to lead a holy life, Father. Help us not to grieve you, Father, in our day-to-day -day life. We want to praise you and worship you. Like the patriarchs, wherever they went, they pitched the tent, built the altar, and called upon the name of the Lord. We want to do the same thing wherever we go, Lord. Help us to show the world that we are the living witness for the Lord. We totally surrender ourselves. Bless everyone, those who have come today, Father. And I bless those who are listening from the YouTube as well, Lord. I bless them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord.